For those of you who do not know me, my name is Tayana. I am a performing artist, a singer, actor, strong mover. <laughs> I am married to my husband, David. We have been married for 13 years, October 6th. I wanted to share, I just, I wanted to share. This is very like not even planned, but it's on my heart and I just kind of want to share it. So this year has been, I was about to say it kicked my tail, but it hasn't because I'm still here. So I've grown a lot through this year, but the year started off crazy. I mean, January 1, whew, child, the ghetto. There's a lot of things that have happened, but the one, the most significant thing I feel that has happened is um, I met my biological father this year. A lot of my friends know, and you know, you've seen pictures and la la la, but I never really told the story publicly and I kind of wanted to share from my perspective. I have known that my daddy who raised me, my number one, okay, um, wasn't, wasn't my biological father since I was about nine. My mama has always been like pretty honest and upfront about that. So I knew that, didn't, didn't really understand what that meant, but from that moment, it was like a hole had been planted in my heart and I'm just like, oh, okay. So who is this guy? Like what? How come he wasn't my dad? Like, why is this? Whatever. But I didn't dwell too much on it, but it's always been in the back of my mind since I was nine, right? And anyway, here I am turning 36 next month, and I I don't know. Like, when I was, tw um, I don't know how to do this. Anyway, I've always known that my daddy was technically my stepdaddy, but he was the only daddy I knew. He raised me since I was 18 months old, so... That's my daddy, period. I've always wanted to kind of find who my biological father was, but I wasn't like overly pressed. I went through some things in my teenage years, you know, me and my mom always had like a kind of very intense relationship, but very like strained. It was so weird. And it was like something that was invisible that was there. And we, neither one of us could really put a finger on why our relationship was so strange, strained. And it was like a lot of decisions. My mom um, was dealing with a lot of mental health issues while I was becoming a teenager. So those two things kind of didn't really go together. I know that now being a grown up and a mother. So anyway, there's that. When I was in college, so my mama told me this one dude was my father, right? My whole life. I've known this person was my father. She told me the name, blah, blah, blah. So in the college, I decided to look for him. This is about 2006, maybe. I was dating David or we were engaged or something. And uh, me and one of my best friends, Cindy, we decided, well, she was there and I asked her to help me like go through the phone book and find this dude. And so we found a couple name matches and we started calling. Well, she was calling cause I was scared. So she called and um, it was a lot of no answers. And then one person picked up the phone and she's like, hello, is this boom boom? Do you, she was like, were you stationed at Fort Gordon in 83, blah, blah. And that person was like, no. She's like, oh, okay. I must have the wrong person. Thank you. And then she hangs up. That person calls back. And then I talked to him. I don't remember. This was like literally like 15 years ago. Um, so I don't remember. Anyway, we started talking. Turns out this is the guy in question. We get to know each other. And I'm just so excited. Hold on, I'm gonna close my door. This is the person in question. We get to know each other, we're talking on the phone. I'm trying to put pieces together. I'm overly excited because this is the guy. This is my father. This is the piece of me that has been missing for years. This is definitely him. Yes, hi. And I'm so excited and he has children, he has a wife, he's living his life. So long story short, I'm overexcited. I have this thing well, that I used to do when I get really, well, I guess I still do it sometimes. When I get really excited about something, I'm very intense in that thing. And I often, especially when I was younger, I don't think about the consequences surrounding those things. And this is a very delicate topic with families involved. And I was 21, I think, 20 or 21. 
And so this is back in the day when Facebook first came out and a lot of people, there were no like Facebook app. It wasn't an app. So like if you wanted to get Facebook stuff on your phone, it came as a text message. So I found this guy's son. <laughs> I am so embarrassed. I have never said this out loud. I found this dude's son on Facebook, y'all. And I sent him a message like, hey, I'm your sister. And this long message, whatever. And so, mind you, this dude doesn't know anything. There's no DNA test that has been taken, any of that. I just, somebody who just got overexcited and just did the most. And so, all hell breaks loose because he's this teenager who whoever, excuse me, gets this message on his phone saying this random girl's his sister. And so that happened. The guy calls me back and like, please don't do like you have started something. And I'm just like, oh, I'm sorry. But you're my dad. So I think everyone should know. And then the wife messages like sends me this email, which she was very kind. You can tell that she was a woman of God because I would not have been that nice if somebody uh, came for my child in that way. I would not have been as nice. So shout out to you, queen. I don't even remember your name. I apologized profusely because I realized, oh God, what did I just do? That was horrible. And I was like, regardless of the DNA results, I will not be contacting you or your family again. And I'm so sorry. And to this day, I literally regret doing that. That is so stupid. It was so, I was very immature. I was 21. I am now 35. So I mean, I get it now, but when I was young, I did not get it. Moving right along, we took the DNA test. Negative. He wasn't even my dad. <laughs> so I am like, what the hell? <laughs> what? I got questions, mom, because you told me this guy was my dad and you were so like, you were so, you were so, but it's not true, girl. So let's have a chat. And she's like, well, to tell you the truth, it's between him and two other people. And I'm like, well, hell, you could have told me that. Then I wouldn't have been looking like no damn fool on the internet. I was so. I was so angry. I was so angry with my mother. And like, she and I have talked about this. Mommy, if you're watching this girl, you know, we good. I'm just, this is my life. So I am telling my story. Originally, when I called my mama, was like, yo, the, the DNA test came back negative. Like, what's good? She's like, that's not true. That can't be true. I'm like, science, baby, science. So I'm pissed off at my mom. I don't want to talk to her. I don't want to deal with her. She... She said it's between him and two other people. So I was just like so broken. I'm just thinking like, well, if I, who am I? If I don't know where I come from, like who am I really? Where do I belong? Am I not important? Am I not important to God? Am I not important to my father, whoever he is? Like, I just felt like my whole life was a lie. And I just felt like, and I've always felt like on the outskirts of love, like even though I'm not trying to say that I did not have love in my life because my home was a very um, loving space. But then when I got out into the world, I just never quite fit in with the people. You know what I mean? Like I didn't belong anywhere. So of course this did not help my situation. I just felt like I am just lost. I don't know who I am. And then um, I felt the Lord say to me, how I got here really doesn't determine who I am, that, that I'm validated by God. He's the one who validates me. Okay, I'm gonna let you out because you just interrupted my flow. He was basically saying like, it doesn't, that doesn't matter because I'm your father and I am the one who validates you and I say this about you and that that's when I really started to kind of rekindle my relationship with God and um so I mean that situation really sucked and that but it caused me to get closer to God so fast forward to April of 2020 I never knew my mama told me my biological father's name was whatever and that guy wasn't the guy and I knew it was two other guys and one of them I think she told me one of his name was Stefan but I for some reason I feel like she may have told me the name of the other guy, but I just for some reason could never remember it or I I never, the name was foreign to me. I'm on the phone with my daddy, my Tim, my Tim daddy, his name is Tim. I don't know if you're watching this, but if you are, hey. And he's like, I'm do, I, okay. 
So I've been doing, you know, doing, doing my family tree. I have dubbed myself the family historian on my mama's side of the family, period. And my granddaddy said I could have the Bible when he goes to heaven. So that's on period. So I've been doing that. I've been researching and, you know, just digging really deep into my Gullah Geechee heritage, you know, because I didn't know my other side of my family. So I was like, I don't know about them, but I know I'm Gullah. So I'm going to go here and be here. And that's something to celebrate. And I'm very proud of that. I belong to that. I feel like I belong somewhere, you know, I did my DNA test. So I found out all the pieces of Africa, you know, places in Africa or whatever that I come from and all that. Anyway, so I'm on the phone with my dad, my daddy dad, and he's like, yo, you think you'll be able to find your biological father from this? Like you're doing all this research. And I was like, man, to be honest, I ain't even really looking for that dude. Like, I don't care. At this point, I was like, I, if I ain't found him yet, I'm just not going to find him. You, my daddy, the end. And he was like, well, I bet you if you ask your mama since she had a baby with him, I'm sure she knows his name, Tiana. Why don't you ask her? And I was like, fine. And so I called my mom on the phone. I'm like, Ma, I know you told me other dude was not my father, but do you, do you know my biological father's name? And she tells me the name and it's like, see if you can find him on Facebook. And I was like okay and i'm just like okay what the hell might as well just do it so i look his name up on facebook and there he was just as easy as one two three okay i don't even under anyway so there he was and then like i look on his page a little bit um you know how you can tell like people who are like older and how they don't really know how to work facebook it was, it was very that. And I didn't even friend him yet. And I look and I see that he has three kids and there's one of the kids. I saw her and was like, hold on, giving, giving a lot here. And so I just say, bump it. I'm gonna message this dude. And I messaged him and was like, Hey, you don't know me. My name is Tiana. Long story short, I could be your daughter. Um, I was born at this time, this year, um, on this army base. My mama's name is Boom. Does that name ring a bell to you? Well, actually, first first I asked him, like, if he was stationed at the place they were stationed. He was like, yeah. And then I said all that other stuff. Or he asked me who I was. And then I said all that stuff. And then I didn't hear anything until the next day. And then the next day, do you know the message that I received when I asked him, like, does this name, my mother's name, ring a bell to you? He's like, oh, that was the love of my life. I've been looking all over for her and looking all over for you. I always knew you were a girl. Please call me. And I'm like, so I call him on the phone because I'm like, wow, it's crazy when you ain't looking how some time stuff just drops in your lap, whatever. So I call him on the phone and um, I say hello and he just burst into tears. And I'm just like, yikes, this is weird. So we're just talking, getting to know each other. I'm telling him about me and my family and where I live. And he's like, oh, I live in Florida. I'm from New Jersey. I have kids. Um, I'm married, da, 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 da. And I'm just like, okay. And it's just like surreal to me, but like I put all my emotions in the first one and I didn't want to do that again so i was just like real dry like okay great nice to talk to you and he tells me that his parents actually live in the same town that my mother and sister are living in like literally right now so this whole time my paternal grandparents have been an hour away from me and i never knew and that is so crazy to me um and so he's telling me about his siblings and all this and, da -da -da, and then my brother I have a brother and two sisters and all this stuff. And I'm just like, it's just so much for me. It's just so much mentally and emotionally for me. And um, I, I just can't take. I'm just like, okay. I'm just very like, I can't. And then he says, and this is what really sent me out of the door. He says, I love you. <laughs> and I was like, well, I love you that we had this conversation <laughs> have a good day because i was like that's weird i mean you're a stranger i don't know you and then i had to think about it like if my daughter if i knew that i had a child out there in this world that i could not see and i could not touch and i could not have 
that I wanted so badly, I would probably lose it too and be weird and be like, oh, I love you to this strange child. And then I woke up the next day and he calls me and he's like, hey, I am here with your sister, Tiara. And sorry, girl, I said your name, but I mean, ain't nobody gonna see this. So uh, she's like, hey, girl. And we're start, we start talking or whatever. And then he tells me, you know, my mom passed away last night. And I'm just like, I'm sorry. He tells, so the night that he and I met was the night his mother passed away, which I'll get there in a second. And I'm just like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. And so he's like, so we have to make plans for the funeral. So I'm going to be in North Carolina in, a, in like a week or so. And I was just like, okay. And he's like, so I really like to meet you. And I'm just like, okay, okay. So anyway, long story short, y'all seen the pictures. He came down here and we met. <laughs> and you know, this whole time I'm still being very standoffish because this is a full stranger that I do not know. Yes, we are blood, but I don't know you. And I don't even know if you're my daddy anyway, so I need to take a DNA test. And so I'm telling him like, we need to take a DNA test. I wanna take a DNA test. He said, look here, girl, I don't need no DNA test to know that you my child, because I'm looking right at you. And I was like, okay, but I wanna take one anyway. And so he's like, fine. And then, so we go down to the said town. My whole dad's side of the family is in town, minus a few people, I think, because there's a funeral happening. Um, so we pull up, me and my family, because I wasn't going to go by myself because I had a literal panic attack. So me and my kids and the dog, we all drove and met him. And when I got out of the car and I looked at him, like, in the face, I was like, we look just alike. <laughs> that is my whole daddy. Wow. And it's it's just so weird because he's not the daddy I know. The daddy I know is the daddy I know and the family I know, you know? So this is all new and overwhelming. Blah, blah. This is going to be a long video. You ain't got to watch this whole thing, baby, if you don't want to. I met him. It's weird. It's cool, though. I meet all my cousins. I did not meet my siblings. They were not there. They're still in Florida. I met a bunch of cousins. It was good to see all of you. It was it was really cool and I love family, so that was pretty dope. I met all my aunties. I got one uncle. I met my granddad. How was that? And that whole situation, trying to, hi hey, baby, I'm recording. Oh. Do you want to say hello? Hello. That's my child, Parker. Okay, get out. Did you poot and leave? You are rude. So I, it's just, it's just been a lot navigating this relationship trying to get to know my father who i was talking about how intense i was like when i was in my 20s this guy i got it from him because this guy was giving me so much and i was just like i need six thousand feet like i can't it's just a lot to process and so i was very overwhelmed and then like he kept asking me about my mom and i was like bro why did you ask me about my mama like what they got to do with me and you getting to know each other like why for what? Why do you need to know about her? She's fine. She don't want to talk to you. Eventually, y'all saw the pictures. They start talking and liking each other. And he had recently gotten divorced or whatever from his um, former wife. My mom's been divorced for a very long time. And so they start talking. Who's at my door? Hey, hello? I'm sorry, I'm very loud. And I was just like, navigating that relationship was weird because I was like, so y'all didn't talk for 35 years and now you want to get to know each other. Fine, get to know each other. That's cool. I don't want that to interfere with my relationship with getting to know my father, whatever, whatever, as long as that's not the whatever. Then all of a sudden, I blink my eyes twice and they're madly in love and they're dating. And I'm just like, huh? And I feel like once again, I don't belong anywhere. I just feel like once again, I've been moved out of the way. I don't belong anywhere. Cause now it's not about me getting to know my dad. It's about y'all two all the time. Cause you know, young love, new love, you all up on each other and everything. So it's about the two of them. And I'm just like, okay, so where does that leave me? I'm learning this thing, this little thing called boundaries <laughs> that I did not have before because as at a very young age, my boundaries were not, um, they were overstepped often. So I, I had poor boundaries, you know, but this, situation has caused me to really establish and maintain legit boundaries because I didn't want to lose my mind behind the two of them doing whatever they were doing um, because it was just lots of drama surrounding it. It's like, I just really want to remove myself completely out.
of this because it was just a lot for me. All the stuff happens. My mother gets sick with COVID-19 and I'm terrified. Um, it's just a lot. This year, <laughs> I ain't even tell you everything, but um, yeah, she gets sick with COVID and it's just a lot. They're trying to get married, but she got COVID. It's just like a lot of stuff. And my therapist is like, girl, you can't make other people's issues your issues. You have got to protect your own peace. So that's what I've been doing. But I would like to say this is not, this is no shade toward my mom or my dad. Like they're fine. They're great. This is just where I am at this moment where I've been. And I just, I don't know what prompted me to share this, but I'm just sharing this. I don't know. I don't know if it'll help someone else, but establish your boundaries, maintain your boundaries, because if you don't, people will walk over them and people are selfish sometimes. Okay, people are selfish sometimes and they don't do, they don't often do it on purpose, but they don't see how their actions affect other people. Just look at the the story about what I did in my 20s. I didn't look at how that that action would affect so many people around me. And this whole situation affected me in such a real crazy way that I didn't think that I would be dealing with in my 30s. Anyway, my parents were recently married which I'm very happy for them. I'm very happy for my mom. My dad really loves her. He treats her well. And really that's all I care about. Um, she deserves to be loved on. It's been a very long time. Actually, I've never seen her loved on like how my father loves on her. And she deserves that, he deserves that. Everybody I feel deserves the kind of love that my husband gives me. Cause my man loves me down. I love him too. You also deserve to have your boundaries respected. You can't make other people's problems your problems all the time. You have to take care of yourself. My parents are married. They're very happy. They just bought a house. They are moving in together and living life. But I never sat to think about how all of that affected me. And it's such a powerful testimony. I mean, just think about it. My mother, who has been through so much trauma in her own life, and after so long, she's able to, our relationship was able to heal. I found my father. She, after 35 years, was able to reconnect with someone that she knew and they fell in love. Like God will really restore your life if you let him, honey. It's just a lot emotionally for me. So I'm just processing everything day by day. I don't want anybody to think that I'm not happy for my mama. I'm so happy for her, so happy for my dad. He's finally happy and in a place where he is happy and everybody's happy. I'm getting there. There's a different process for me because I'm just, it's just a lot. Anyway, I don't know why I felt like sharing this, but this is my testimony. Uh, the things that I have learned this year so far is about boundaries, protecting your peace, and just being grateful for the things that you do have. I'm very grateful that now I got two daddies that really love me. <laughs> I don't know. And uh, regardless of how you got here, you're here for a purpose and you are loved. So there may be someone on the other side of this video who may feel like they don't belong anywhere or they may feel like no one loves them. They may feel neglected, but God has not forgotten you. You are loved. You have every right to feel the feels, but the feelings are not always facts, okay? Feelings are information. They're not instructions. So, yeah, take that with you. I, my, everyone's farting around me. My son farted, now my dog farted, and y'all stank. You stank. That's just my testimony. <laughs> On my next episode, maybe I'll share how my marriage freaking was almost over this year, but God restored that too. Anyway, I'm gone. I gotta go work on this monologue. Thank y'all so much for watching. Uh, comment if you made it to the end of this video, cause you a real one, cause child, I could not. Anyway, <laughs> bye.